Hi scrapbookers, it's Katie Scott and I'm coming to you um, with a rule about white space. And what is white space? Um, white space is, oh it's not even listed in here, how funny. Um, this is a design index that I use a lot, it's by Jim Krause. And I'll tell you what white space is. <laughs> white space is basically on a, like say I were making a scrapbook layout, right? Then I would, um, I'd have some photos, but then I might have a title or, or maybe some embellishments, that sort of thing. So say I was making a layout, right? I've got some embellishments. Maybe I have a title, but maybe I don't fill up the entire space. Maybe I leave some space down here and some space up here for your eye to rest. Um, the rule, what I'm in the process of is making layouts for masterful scrapbook design, breaking the rules and rule play. And so if I were to make a page where I didn't have any white space, I might fill up every single bit of this layout and that is exactly what I'm going to do. So, um, and I just drew these pictures randomly, but I kind of like that one there. Um, in this photo, just looking at this photo, the action is right here. So all of this over here is white space, all of this over here is white space. White space doesn't actually need to be white, but just in the spirit of let's do away with white space. There's some kind of a funny line going through that photo. Although I like that photo. <laughs> it seems like the print, the pr there was some printer error there. Um, but so, just to avoid any white space whatsoever, which I can't believe this book doesn't have anything on white space because I know that, well, I took a class over at Get It Scrapped and, and um, Masterful Scrapbook Design and the textbook that we used was actually called White Space is Not the Enemy. And I like to say white space may not be the enemy, but it's not my best friend. Like, I like to fill up the page. Specifically, I like to fill up the page with as much photos, with as many photos and words as I can. Um, I, I seriously can't believe that, that white space is not in here. <laughs> but I uh, just to let you know, when I make these videos, I really do just press play and then start talking. So there's not a lot of pre-planning. But what I'm going to do during the, this layout process is I'm going to be um, actually not doing the whole thing simultaneously. But I just wanted to show you what I did first was I just took a pencil and a ruler. I marked out a spot right in the middle of the page. And then I just kept moving my ruler around the page until I got um, like a sunburst effect. And then I've been coloring them in with these Prismacolor um, thick lead art pencils. And the top, I've been doing lighter than the bottom. So it's not exactly an ombre, but I want the bottom to be heavier, so I'm using more pressure. And I've got a funny desk here with like lots of flaws in the, um, in the desk. So it, there's just a, <laughs> there is the indents kind of show through so I'm using a lighter touch up here but the same color so I'm just using two different shades and I'm just doing this basically because I thought it would be fun and then I was I'm not sure if I'm gonna I guess if I were not doing a white space rule break I might leave some of these blank but since I am, um, I'm really, you know, focusing on the white, sp the rule breaking, the white space. I'm gonna keep going with my, um, with the rainbow scheme. So that was really like a dark blue. So let's look for a purple. This looks like a good purple. Imperial violet. We'll take it. So it's gonna be darker down here. And I'm just coloring this in. And sometimes it's fun to, um, if you're a paper scrapbooker especially, and you find that you use um, 
mostly patterned papers or cardstock for the base of your layout. Sometimes it's fun to um, make your own paper. I mean, you don't need to do it every time. And, but there's certainly some that do it a lot of the time. But it's fun to, um, I've been trying to get this all the way to the edge, or just about. And then I'll use my Imperial Violet up here. So, so sometimes it's fun to challenge yourself to just do things a little bit differently. And I don't usually make pages that start off with my coloring. <laughs> but, um, but I just thought I would. So it's good to get out of your own little, you know, unofficial rules too. If you usually start a page with pattern paper, and I do a lot of that. Um, sometimes it's fun to just change up your process a little bit because your brain will just start thinking about your page just a little bit differently. And so why do we want to break rules? Like, what what's the point of that? Um, and the point of it sometimes is to, um, to let yourself feel not so um, stifled creatively, but also, um, like, so if, if, you know, if you think you have to do something a certain way, and then you say, well, I'm not going to do it that way. And some people really jive on that, and I'm one of them. I, I do like to um, break rules, um, but for a good reason. So I don't just, you know, I don't go breaking laws or anything like that, but... <laughs> If you tell me like, oh, you can't make an effective scrapbook page if you fill up the whole space, then I'm going to be like, yes, I can. I can, I can do that, and I can make it look good. Um, so, or I don't know. Just it's some. There's a. <laughs> what am I trying to say? Okay, what I'm trying to say is there is this. Um, motivational speaker and author named Sally Hogshead and she writes about how people are motivated and how to fascinate that's one of her books and each each you know everybody each person has a personality type according to her um, and she's got like 49 personality types I guess and it's and you'd have to go look at her site because I don't have it handy, but um, some people are motivated or they react to trust or consistency, and some people um, are motivated by change <laughs> and rebellion. Um, it's funny because my husband, um, you know, really responds to ch trust and consistency, and I really respond to change and rebellion. <laughs> so that makes for, you know, interesting dinner conversation. Um, but, and sometimes opposites attract, you know. But each, it's, it's, it would be, I think some of her tests are free and some of them you pay for. It's similar to um, like a Myers-Briggs type test, except it's not exactly the same. Um, but that's a good test to take too. And so it's just good to know what your personality strengths and weaknesses are and what kind of motivates you. There's a lot of popular like psychological literature on that stuff. And I just find it kind of fascinating, <laughs> you know, because the book is how to fascinate. Ha uh -huh. <laughs> Amuse myself. Um, but I... I do recommend just taking a look at that, and especially if you're drawn to rebellion or um, change, a great way to change up your scrapbook process is to take what you know about scrapbook rules, and it really can be anything. So it doesn't just have to be about layout design. Like say you think every single page needs to have a photo to be a scrapbook page then whatever your rules about, like figure out what your own rules about scrapbooking are and then just turn them on in their, their heads and like see where that takes you. And I think it will take you to interesting places because it'll show you that you're not as boxed in as you think you might think you are. And uh, the other thing with that is 
it's good to have boundaries in creativity. And so it, boundaries are useful and laws are useful. Like those are, you know, those are good things in life, believe it or not, and in creativity. But if you can say, I think that every page needs at least three photos, um, or I think every page should only have one photo, or whatever you think about photos on scrapbook pages, like just turn that upside down. So if you are, you, you know, usually make pages with just one page, make one, make a one with like 20 photos on one page. And if you usually use too many, you or a lot, not too many, but many, <laughs> then use less. Um, just, I would just say, figure out what your own rules are that you're putting on yourself and then break your own rules. So they don't have to be these rules that we're breaking for the purpose of this class. But just, I guess what the point of all this is, is that it's great to have rules and it's great to know what the rules are because the rules are there for a reason, but then it's also good to question the rules and play with them and see if when you break them, can you get to a good, good place or did it like bring you creatively to a better or different, doesn't even have to be better, but just a different creative space. So I guess my, my theory is, it's just good to mix it up. Um, I'm, I'm one who really likes the variety. You know, I think I like a lot of choices, but not too many, I like constraints too, but I like to um, be able to change my mind. And I like to be, I like, especially in, in scrapbooking, to feel like I have, I'm the boss of this. <laughs> you know, I, you can't tell me how to make my page. And I really, I think I even heard, maybe during one of Dina Weekly's um, Masterful Scrapbook Design Talks, and I think she's one of the teachers this month as well, is she says that, um, you know, you're, I'm the boss of my own scrapbook page. And I really like that. I think that's true. But I'd also say if you, you know, you look at galleries and you start to notice like, oh, all these layouts seem to have a similar something to them. Then wouldn't it be interesting, like say all the layouts look kind of, um, you know, white. white. There's white um, cardstock and all the photos are light and everything looks so light and white, then go dark. <laughs> go dark, go, you know, black cardstock and go, like just do the complete opposite. Um, because what you'll find in, I think one of these rules is that if you have, like say you have a layout with all similar colors and then you have a yellow, like your layout is blues and greens and then your your um your title is in bright yellow. What you're gonna notice, even if it's small, is that bright yellow. Speaking of bright yellow, some bright yellow down on this page. So I guess I'm just rambling, <laughs> but I um I'm finishing up on my my assignments for this breaking the rules, and just wanted to show you part of my process. I don't really know where this layout is going, but I know that the rule that I'm trying to break is to um, not have white space. Oops, just broke that. <laughs> broke the rules and I broke my pencil. Um, so I'm just going to continue on until this page is all the way colored in and I'm just going according to Roy G. Biv, and I'm doing, oops, just so you can see, uh, on the top is lighter and the bottom is darker. And so I'll check back in after I make some more progress with this, and uh, maybe I'll stop rambling so much. But, um, but I, I really do like to think of their creative process, and I find that inspiring. So I'll be back. 
Okay, so I'm back and I have finished my layout and I'm going to do another thing that you might think is a little nuts. But what I'm going to do is take a watercolor pencil and I've never tried this before. Like, And I just put some time and effort into making all this. But what I'm going to do is this is a white watercolor pencil. I'm just going to color in over the top of all of these colors and then I'm going to show you what I and it so it doesn't it seems to be like mixing up the colors and maybe them making them a little bit more intense I think hope you can see that but I just want to cover like most of the surface and I've just done the lighter let me I guess I'll Go ahead and do the darker ones too. Although, well, okay, so <laughs> if I was doing an ex a science experiment, what my theory is, once I add water, the color is going to blend into all of the white spaces. Because even though I've completely colored this, um, this piece of paper, there's still white showing through, right? So I've added white, which you might think would make it look more white, but actually what it does is just spread that color around a little bit. And so my this here's the experiment part of it. And I really haven't tested this out before. And um, this is my bottle of water in my scrapbook room. <laughs> and I um I probably should have I'm just going to pour a little into the top there. And then I'm just going to use my fingers to see what happens. And so I think what I think will happen is all of the color is going to. No, it's horrible. <laughs> so um, I don't think this is going to work out the way I envisioned it. And it's okay because I. I think it is important to play and to try new things out and even to try things out on your page. So the green didn't look, I don't think the green worked out very well because there was some other color in there. But let's try that teal. And so I know that if the worst thing happens and I completely screw up like this green looks like it didn't really come out that well but the the aqua seems like it's coming out a little bit better I can cover up like I know that I can cover up things so there's my kind of saving grace is I know that all of this is just for play and that's the point <laughs> and it's okay to play on your now, if I was like maybe a little bit further into the process um, and I had a bunch of other work invested in this page, I might not be as experimental with it, but I think it's okay. And it is doing, let's just try it out on the blue. Oh yeah. I really like that effect on the blue. I'm just going to see what happens if I just put it directly onto the paper and I didn't use watercolor paper I probably should have because that would have accepted all of this a little bit better like as far as um, <laughs> with the uh, what do you call it the paper wouldn't crinkle up as much but it's okay I'm gonna I'm gonna be okay with that <laughs> And so I'm just going to keep going, and I'm probably going to get a paper towel to just um, sop up some of that extra, but I'm going to get it so where it's mostly saturated in the page. And so this is mostly Prima colors, um, the, just the um, colored pencils, and then with the white watercolor pencil over, over top. And that will just 
make the color, make the white space kind of go away a little bit. It's still showing through, but a little bit less so. And I get to play. So I will continue on in a little bit and we'll see how we, where we go from there. Okay, I'm back. So I've actually blow dried this and um, it's pretty dry. It's getting to be a little wrinkly. That's okay. And then in the spirit of continuing to do experimentation, what I'm going to do is this. It's almost Christmas time around here, so I have some Christmas wrapping paper. I'm just going to lay that out on my desk. <laughs> I hope I don't make too much of a mess. And so I'm going to try to spray. I've got blue and red um, sprays. And so what I'd like to do is spray the red on the red and the blue on the blue. So... <laughs> Again, I really don't do a lot of preparation for these videos. Um, I'm just going to get a white piece of cardstock from across the room. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm almost there. <laughs> okay, I have it. And this is actually, um, this is like, I, I tend to keep, I get pattern paper pads. I keep the tops and the bottoms because they're useful, I think. So I had a ruler. I don't know where it went, <laughs> but what I want to do is, this is where, oops, I want to make it, so I'm going to go over the warmer colors. And I'm just marking off where I should cut. So we're going to go like this. And this is imprecise. And this. Okay? And I'm just going to hand cut. And the, these, are, these pieces of paper are going to act like a mask. So in one of these, I will cover up the warm colors. And the other one... I will cover up the cool colors. So this is going to be my cool cover. My cool color cover up. <laughs> okay, and so what's the point of all this? What, why am I doing this anyways? Um, the reason is that I don't use, one of my like personal scrapbook rules is I don't spend too much time on this usually. Like I don't do misting for the most part. Um, so let's do the, I mean I, I have two bottles of mist and I've tried it a couple times but I haven't really tried it. I, I'm not an expert, I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> Which qualifies me to teach a class, right? No, it doesn't, but <laughs> What it does qualify me to do, or what I'm trying to convince you of is, it's good to experiment. So I'm even wearing a nice shirt here. So I'm just doing my misting thing. And so I've misted it this way, just a little bit more, because I want the center to be more than the edges. And then I'm gonna mist this way. And hopefully I didn't get that all over my room. <laughs> I really hope I didn't. And now I'm just going to let that, I'm thinking I should let that dry a little bit. But now I have these two pieces, which who knows, maybe those can be used for something at some point. And now I'm going to put down my other mask. Let's see how this went. <laughs> how did this go? Okay, this is this. So I'm going to cover up what I just did, and maybe I shouldn't because it's still wet, but I'm going to anyways. And then we've got this little segment here. And so the first one I used was Color Shine by Heidi Swap. And this one is Maya Mist. This is Turquoise Metallic and Primrose. And so I've also moved my camera away a little bit just in case any of that goes astray. 
Okay, they are kind of a, it seems like the Maya Mist is more concentrated. It might just be the way I'm spraying it, I don't know. But I'm just gonna leave that there. And voila! And now it really seems, seems like I need more of the red in the middle, huh? So let's try that again. Even though that's not dry, I'm still going to put my masks back on and now I have a little bit more and I think that will be, oh I hope I didn't get that on my clothes, <laughs> um, I hope that will be a little more consistent. Okay, it looks like I, I smooshed it a little but I'm going to live with that and it didn't go all the way to the side here but I'm still, this is just going to be how it is and I... Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go and see what that does. So I'm going to get one more piece of white cardstock. Again, running across the room here. I should probably have more white cardstock right next to my desk. But I don't. And so I'm just going to lay that down right over it. And see. Basically because I just want this to dry. So I've got this, doesn't seem that pretty, does it? And then this is what my, my pattern paper that I'm gonna be using for the base of my no white space <laughs> layout is gonna look like. Okay, so I will be back again. Okay, so I'm back and I have added <laughs> a box of baby wipes to my new scrapbook space. Um, so I think if you're going to be spraying inside your house, use some baby wipes. I think spraying outside your house is probably a good idea, but I'm not going to do it on this layout. Um, but this is how it looks, and it's real pretty because it's, it's like glimmery. Both of the um, sprays, even though they were by different manufacturers, have like a, a glimmer or shimmer to them. So it's pretty, and it's not usually what I do. So now I'm going to search for a photo to go on this, to this layout, and I will be back. Okay, I'm back, and I have kind of a plan for this page, and it is in search of white space. And so we live in Florida, so we don't really get a lot of snow. We don't get any snow, um, but we love the snow. So my kids and I try to get away to go skiing every year, and it's always a bit of a trick. Because my husband does not love skiing, does not need white space <laughs> in the form of snow, um, but we really do. So we go through this little dance every year of, you know, when are we going to go, how much is it going to cost, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so this is my photo for the layout. And this is just my daughter, and she we um, bought these, like, little $5 saucers. And so after the skiing, that first day that we were... Uh, out in Colorado we went sledding and the kids were completely thrilled so this is going to be even though this this photo has a lot of like literally white space on it um, this is where my title is going to go and then what I'm going to do for some of these different um, what do you call them <laughs> rays of the sunburst is I'm going to put I'm going to cut out little photos from index sheets because our life is pretty busy. So some of these, what I want to show is we need, we need this white space because our life is so busy. So all of these, all of this area is going to be active also in that it's going to have either photos. And what I'm going to try to do is whatever the color of the photo is, that's where it's going to go on the layout. And then I'm also going to put in embellishments and stuff like that. So let me, um, I'm going to start with the photos though. So let me get through some of those and then I will check back in with you. Okay, so I'm usually a scrapbooker who adheres things down as I go, but I really wanted to make sure I was happy about the placement. So the photo is going to go here and what I'm doing is just placing my embellishments according to color. So I have this little um, container of embellishments 
and I'm just figuring out where do they fit on the page according to color and I don't a lot like some of my pages you'll see I don't even um, I don't even use embellishments at all <laughs> but sometimes I get this idea that oh wouldn't it be great if I just use a whole heap of embellishments so that's um, that's this kind of a page and what I'm just doing is just like putting an obnoxious amount of embellishments on one piece of paper and so or one scrapbook layout and I'm really just going through and if it if it looks like it's blue or if it looks like it's green then it goes here um, I have done I've had tried to do some, some um, like triangle ish things so like if I have big like I've got three hearts um, I'm trying to place things so that they're visually appealing and when you do that it's easy to do that if you place things in threes but this is like a great way to use up <laughs> and not that you just want to use up your embellishments but sometimes it feels like very gratifying to use them and to just use a whole bunch of them on one page so this is a very atypical layout for me I've also got um, like symbolic things like this is a little B and this is going to represent how busy we are and what I want to do too is still incorporate those the photographs and then the title I'm thinking is going to go here I haven't figured out where the journaling is going to go yet um, it might go like maybe I'll just leave it here and here and so what I what I'm doing is I want to have a, a page with no white space and so I want to use as much active I want to have as much active like make everything as active as I can and so I just wanted to check in and kind of show you where how I was coming along with doing that and I'm really just getting random little bits of oh my gosh my kids are down there I think they're screaming a happy screams <laughs> okay I'm gonna go now I they're headed this way <laughs> but that see that there's a representation of life is busy yeah busy and loud <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Um, so that's kind of where I'm going with it. I just wanted to, to show you that so you didn't just all of a sudden see, oh, now she has a zillion things on there and I don't know how she got them on there. It's, in fact, quite random. So I'm just like whatever I pick out, if it looks like it's going to work color-wise, then I'm laying it down and I will be adhering it soon and then I, I will check back in with you yeah this one says you are here so some of them really do apply pretty well um, yeah so that's where I am so far <laughs> I'll be back Okay, so I've gotten a whole bunch of embellishments down. I haven't really gotten the index photos down yet, but I wanted to mat the photo, and I was going to use this white mat. I think it's a little too, bit too big, um, but I was thinking about that as a mat, and then I saw this side has actually the speckle that the rest of it has, so I'm a little bit attracted to that. Um, also, the reason the other reason I like this side instead of the white I think the white I don't know I'm kind of undecided I might use the white <laughs> I'm really not sure um I don't know what I might do is double map this and then use a white and the rest of it because I think I have two of these just because I sort of can't decide and just use thin little layers um, but I pretty much have all of the embellishments on. 
so now I'm wondering about what's going to write on this space. And since I don't know, I'm wondering if a Sharpie is going to do it. And I know that I think I want to reserve like these orange spaces for actual writing. Um, so I am at this point where I, what I want to do is kind of test out writing on this and I'm going to first grab a Sharpie if I can find one. thought I had one handy. <laughs> Here's a Sharpie. Okay, this is a blue Sharpie. I had kind of intended to use a black Sharpie, but let's just, this is a little test. So I'm just going to draw some stars and then I just want to smudge my fingers over it and it looks like that's going to work. So I will be using a Sharpie to do my journaling on this page. It looks like it's going to work. I've done it underneath where the photo is going to go so that was my test. I'm going to adhere my photo down and I'm going to double mat it and then adhere all of these embellishments and the way that I'm going to adhere the embellishments because a lot of them are dimensional is to use this thermo wedge sticky dots and what you can do is just pull it up and then you take your little dimensional embellishment or your your embellishment that has die cuts within it or whatever shape it is and then you can just pull it up Well, and, and another way to do it is to just shut this over it and then you can really get all of the dots on there. But I'll just pull this up and then this should adhere it. So I went out shopping today. I didn't, um, I'm kind of on a shopping hiatus, but the one thing I bought was adhesive. And so I'll just, this would be, if you don't have one of these, I would recommend get a, the Thermo Web. It's called Thermo Web Dots, Sticky Dots. That's a good adhesive to have. Um, of course, glue sticks. Regular tape for the back sides of your layout if you ever use like embroidery floss or you wanna stick anything on the back. I also use double stick tape. And then of course, uh, the popular thing now is washi. This is one of the things I bought today. Uh, I got this at Office Depot. It had a big variety. So there's some washi tapes. And then the other thing that I got was, one of the other things was glue dots. And this will adhere some of these stickier things that are difficult to stick down. And I also bought this 3M, it's called mounting tape. And I like this because you can cut, cut it to whatever shape you want. So I'll probably mount the photo with the, um, the, this stuff so it kind of like lifts off up the page the other thing I'm considering doing is trimming this down and matting the whole thing on black and um, but I don't know I'm I'm kind of still a little bit undecided about that so let's just try that right now see what we think so that would be kind of like I kind of like that so I'm gonna trim this down I should have done it before Hmm, because <laughs> I have all of my things kind of laid out. Uh, maybe I won't do it. I'm not sure. Here's just the the other one that's black. Oh, I think I kind of like that side too, because without the polka dots. Um, hmm. Anyways, there's a little discussion of adhesive and uh, and how the layout is progressing. I will be back. Okay, so I'm checking back in and I just wanted to share with you my progress. Now, I am a frugal scrapbooker, which you may not think from this layout because I'm using like all the, you know, all sorts of embellishments. But what I like to do is just take a white piece of cardstock and then if I have, I've, I ended up liking this paper because it's um, just, it's Echo Park and it's gray and light gray. And so, and it also is polka dots, kind of looks like snow. So it goes with the theme of my page, and then I 
I um, cut down my handmade paper. I just trimmed a little bit of that off to make it a smaller square. So I'm saving these strips. And then I cut out the middle of the, because this is how frugal I am. Um, <laughs> I, I cut out the middle of my sheet of Echo Park paper because it had a cool, it had all sorts of cool things on the back. So I didn't want to, yeah, I, I probably bought the paper because of this side, not this side. So I wanted to still get my money's worth out of that. So I kept those things. And then I also kept this middle where the photo is going to go over. And what I did was just, I just took a pencil and I placed the photo, like I tried to get her exactly in the center. And then I just kind of like made pencil marks and then I cut out the middle. So, so in order to keep my layout a good healthy weight because it's going to have so many embellishments on it, it's all backed on another piece of cardstock. So there's three pieces of paper here and then I used a glue stick to glue all of that down because that's going to hold it pretty well. Um, I find it, it depends on your glue stick. <laughs> <laughs> but this this is a good fresh Elmer's glue stick so I'm I think it's gonna hold really well so the next step is to place my photo and I did have a different um, little mat in mind and I don't think I'm gonna use it after all it was this and I don't know I'm not sure. I don't think it's like, maybe I will. <laughs> it's a, uh, I think actually if I use gray, it might help. It might look better. I also have just handy this, which has snowflakes right in it. Um, that could be, let's just try this as a mat. And I'm just going to hand cut this. I'm not sure because I like the fact that this one has flex, but I'm not sure about the color. And then I also think <laughs> this gets to the point where you just think, oh, I'm overthinking it. And um, I kind of like that because it's a. It's also not white space because there's a lot going on on the mat. Um, but I guess before I make a final decision about that, although I sort of like that too, I don't know, I don't know. Um, I'm going to start to place some of these embellishments. So I just, and what I did was I took all the embellishments off kind of in, like I put my hand over them and then I just moved them to the side. So I hopefully will be able to get them in the same basic place that I had them before. And I'm not so sure I'm still gonna do the idea of the, um, all right, so this was, just so we can get this to be the, whoops, the right, I'm just trying to find where my center is about right here. So that's where I want her little face, and I'm thinking maybe I should just Plop that down and just use the speckle like I with my initial impulse instead of this one. And what I did to the sides is I just like kind of curled them up a little. And so I'm just gonna do that to this mat in the middle. And it just it's my alternative to inking. <laughs> so when uh, I know a lot of scrapbookers will ink the edges. But if you just kind of like fray them up a little bit, then you get a little bit of dimension to them. And I think it helps to help them stand out a little. So now I'm going to, that's where I want her right in the center. And I think I've got it. And now I'm just gonna start placing my embellishments. So what I will do is, 
think I will just pull up one of these sheets. This is the um, ThermoWeb Sticky Dots. And I'll just try to keep the colors a little bit together. And stick them down. And then what I'm going to do is get all of these down. Not the brads, but everything else. These I think are by K and Company. That's something I got at, I wanna say like Michael's. So I'm not putting down like the bling, what do you call this, this flare? I'm not putting down the flare. And I'm still not so sure about my idea of the, um, of having those index photos. So we're just gonna, I should probably think that out <laughs> a little bit more. Um, I don't know. But I think the important thing is when you don't know, it's to just keep on going and making decisions and it as long as you're making progress i think that's a great place to be and sometimes it's good to just walk away from it for a little while but if you're always doing that and never finishing a layout then i think it's good to um, force yourself to finish so i'll just like <laughs> and i get that get all those dots adhered and I've had this, it comes with eight sheets. I've had it for the longest time. And uh, there's still a few sheets that I haven't even used yet. So this is a bargain, <laughs> this sticky dot stuff. And I'm not affiliated with them in any way. <laughs> I just think it's an awesome product. Okay. So there's the so I'm going to stick down the bigger ones first. So I have three big hearts. That will go maybe just, whoops, I guess it's going to go there. Um, <laughs> and you can reposition them, but I'm okay with that spacing. So here's the, I'm just going to have that one sticking a little bit underneath it too. And then let's go with, so we've got hello up here. And I'm not so sure I want hello, hello. I kind of, I don't know, hello. I know that's been kind of overused. It feels like it's been overused. Hello. <laughs> Let's use it anyways. And then this one says you. And so I've got three. So I'm just going to put that here. And the you get a little messed up. There we go. Okay, so what I'm trying to do while I'm placing these embellishments is do it in three. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Great. Now I've got, let's see, I've got some flowers. Whoops. If you have tweezers, that's a good way to, to handle these embellishments as well. And I'm going to put kind of leaves coming out of the flowers, I think. It's just going to go a little bit closer. Even though that's a much smaller flower. Put that one down here. So I'm still trying to place things like three at a time. So there is a little bit of a rhyme and reason to this. Um, now what I think I'll do is um, I'm going to pause the tape and I'm going to find the index, um, what do you call these things? <laughs> the index prints because I would, I would like that to be part of the layout. So I'm going to come back to this, but I have basically all my embellishments and where they're going to go like <laughs> just spread out on the table. So I laid them down, I didn't adhere them, 
and then I move them out so I know about where they're going to go. They might not all get back onto the page because I do want to incorporate the index sheet cards. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and I have cut up a bunch of um, my index sheets and I just get those when I get my Shutterfly prints. So I keep them in my storage binder with all my photos so I know what's coming, but after a while, um, they're, the index sheets aren't as important. And so I have these placed, I tried to place them in different places on the layout so that they weren't um, in any kind of columns, that they were kind of random. And now what I want to do is start figuring out where, um, where the, uh, the bigger embellishments can go. And so I'm going to, here's one, two, <laughs> so I want to, um, kind of make them go in, in threes there. I have some maps, but they aren't actually where we live or where we went <laughs> in this picture. So I think just the three, it says you are here. I think I want that up here where I had it initially. And then I have got one map and I'm gonna not use the rest of them, I think. So I'll just put those to the side. But I like just having the three of those. Um, oh. Here is the yellow one. So there's not a map. Okay. Yeah, I think that works. Let's see if I get a more purple map down here. And I thought about even putting this on the border like that. I kind of And it messes me up otherwise. That's why I haven't adhered anything. I usually adhere stuff, but I usually don't put this much stuff on a page. <laughs> so it was kind of important to um, get that a little bit more figured out. I don't think I like, I don't think I like that. So I think I like where I had, uh, so we still have three of those. I'll put this to the side and I've got some other embellishments. I've got this U-turn detour. I don't, I'm not sure that works because then I don't have a spot for that yellow. So I'm going to take these. They're like metal embellishments and just put those to the side. I have um, three of these brads that are um, sparkly and so I like the thought about using these because I think they can... So what I'm trying to do is put things on the page where they're still like the triangles are always going to like try to lead your eye into the main event. I have these little strips of, and I was going to put those, I don't think they're going to work anymore. So I'm putting those to the side also. I've got three little Okay, I think these work a little bit better. Three little flowers. And those I think will work a little bit better. And it's really just figuring out like where is it gonna make sense to put things. Um, I don't know if I have that. Maybe right there. Okay, I like that. And then I'm also breaking the rule kind of of communicate, don't decorate. Although my rule, my communication with all this stuff is life is busy. 
for most of our year. Um, and so the sunburst is almost like a clock. Um, and then the white space is here, but I'm going to write over that. I'm also going to do my journaling over the orange. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere those down and then I will check back in with you again. Okay, so I've done some journaling and what I did was I went to Pinterest and I actually searched um, for white space quotes. And so I found some that were interesting, like this space is your oasis. When you reduce life to black and white, you never see rainbows, which is good for this page. Um, I'll love you forever. At all costs, you must love what you do. Nothing great ever came easy. Do more of what makes you happy. A daughter is the most beautiful, is the most beautiful gifts the world, where did I write the end the rest, has to give. And so you can't really read my journaling. It worked really well on the blue. It did not work on the, um, the warmer color. So I was going to do some journaling in here, but because I uh, just couldn't write even with a Sharpie over that, I could probably, I wonder if I could write with the um, Copic marker. Oh, and I just messed this up a little bit. Let me just try that. So, and unfortunately I don't have an orange Copic. That's something I could really use, and I don't really want to ruin my Copics. But let's just see if we can like just do a little test. It does work. So here's one of the quotes. Uh, let's just see. This one started out. If you love the life, let's just see. If you love it was if you love the life. Hold on. <laughs> One was be open to whatever's next. So be open to whatever is next. And then, so that does work. But then I've, uh, I kind of like the idea of, of the, uh, the washi tape. Simple is beautiful. Oh, we got that already. If you love... It was like, if you love the life, if you love the life, <laughs> hold on, I, I can't seem to find it. It was like, if you love the life you live, then you'll live a life full of love, something like that. There was also, beware the barrenness of a busy life. If you, I'm, so, if you love the life you live, then... You, <laughs> this is where I ran into the problem before. So that's getting a little illegible, but I do want to write the, beware the barrenness of a busy life. And that was by Socrates. I'm just going to write that one down. Oh, okay. So I do have a little bit of white space right here. Of course, we're going to obliterate that with the washi tape. Um, let's see. So this is much longer than I ever usually spend on a layout. And I did take the photo up because before I had it, um, but I didn't think I had it exactly straight. So. If you want to be frugal and like use that washi tape that's going to be in the center, you can pull that up like quite easily and then put it all over the white space book. How's that for rebellious? <laughs> uh, but let's just find those other tapes. Where on earth did they go? Um, hmm. I've been working on this for so long that my desk has gotten a little bit messy. I don't know where this one or this one went. So let's just see if I can use this bit. So this was going to go, huh, 
it must have gone like this. And then if I just draw the line over, it's going to go over to, I don't know where that tape went, otherwise I would use it. Isn't that funny? It's not that funny. And then I have this pink one. I can't believe I've lost it. So here we go. Oops. And I was almost afraid it looked like cat whiskers. <laughs> but let's just... So, huh. I was... Yeah, this didn't, um, I wish I could find those tapes. I can't seem to find them. But let me just pull that back up. Because I do want it to look straight underneath there. So it's going to go like this. And then I will just replace this. And hopefully get it straight. And get it where it was. I think it was here. There we go. Okay, now, because we're obliterating all white space, because we're breaking the rules just for the fun of it, I'll put some washi right on the, on the photo. And now I want to do In Search of White Space. And so I'm going to my letter stickers. And I have them in this giant bin. And I think I want to do black for ISO. I think I have one in mind. And then the white space, the word white space is gonna be smaller. So, I have this font that I use a lot, and I bought a whole bunch of them on sale. I think it's, it's American Crafts, and so I want to use I, like ISO for In Search Of. And I hope it's going to fit without, I don't think it's going to. Hmm. I don't really want to go over her, so let me pull these up and then put them back down. I'll start with the O. So I'm crowding the letters in here but I think you can kind of tell what they say. And I like the fact that they're crowded because it's all about looking for some space. And now I want to write white space, and I think I would like to write that in white letters. Uh, and I have these really like um, wide letters, and I'm not sure if they're gonna work. Let's just see. And I could even overlap them. It'd be so crowded. <laughs> Part of where we go out in Colorado, we go to a place called Durango. And one of the things we really love about it is that, you know, you get the whole mountain to yourself. And where we live now, it's, you know, every square inch of space is pretty much occupied with humans. We live in a very dense area. And, you know, life is pretty busy, so let me just get that down just a little bit. So white space can have the meaning of having a visual place to rest on your layout, but it can also, you can also translate that to What about your life? Does your life have any white space? 
And my life does not have a lot of white space and neither do my layouts. <laughs> Maybe I should make layouts with more white space and have a less busy life. Um, so in search of white, and I'm not sure I want to write space in the same font, so I'm going to put this font away and then see about trying to cram all these back in here. <laughs> I guess that's part of the problem, right? But um, my layouts don't typically have a lot of white space, and neither does my life. And I'm going to read you, I'm going to look in the white space um, book here. Here's one that has, this might work, a different, this is also thickers, most of these are thickers. This is just a little bit different. I don't know, maybe I want to color. Oh, I know what I can do! <laughs> because these are canvas and because I have Copics, I can make my... Um, letters in the word space be different colors like the rainbow like all of this so I kind of I like that idea so in search of white space and so I know I don't have any I think it's called ascenders and descenders ascenders so even though this is a lowercase alphabet I know I'm fine And what I usually do is color right on the layout, although I'm not really sure that I want to do that because I've really crammed stuff. <laughs> I've really crammed it in here, so I think I'm going to take them off and do them off of the page, but I'll show you how I do that. <laughs> so let's just use this plastic from the, the thickers container. And we'll start with the dark blue. This is a really dark blue. And let's even see if I can do like half of the letter one color. So like, and then let's see, mix it with this color blue. This is like a canvas letter sticker, or thicker. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. And so I'm going to try to do two colors on each letter. And I haven't pre-planned it out, so I'm just doing it as I go. So the next one will be like teal and green, or maybe green and then the darker green. And then the teal color. That will work. And I'm just kind of blending it a little bit, but not even really too much. And then the next one will be this light green and yellow. don't usually go to this much um, level of detail in any layout that I ever do. One of these is yellow okra and the other one is golden yellow. And I'm trying to decide which one is more orange. <laughs> and I should probably test these out first. That would be a good idea. Let's just try it real quick on a scrap piece of paper. So that is golden yellow. And that is yellow okra, which seems a little bit more orange. So I'll use that on the next one. Here's the... Okay, that's not blending as well as the rest of them did, but it's still fine. Whoops. Okay. Just a little bit down. 
Here we go. Did I use the... No, I'm okay. <laughs> that almost looks brown, which is not my intention. And then I've got a red, a pink, but some pink. I don't really have another orange. Let's just see. I do have this. It's called R02, and I think it does kind of read as orange. Yes. I like that better than the goldenrod. So there's. And then we'll finish with a little bit of pink and a little bit of. Let's do the light pink instead of magenta. So, coloring thickers or glitter stickers is one of my favorite things to do lately. And I really think that if you bottle your letter stickers in white, you can color them whatever color you wanted. I think that would be awesome. Okay, I think I'm just about finished with this layout. I'm going to go ahead and photograph it tomorrow, but it is, I think she's done. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I've spent way more time on this layout than I ever spend on um, normal, you know, my day-to-day -day layouts. But this was a fun experiment. I did a lot of things on this page I don't normally do. I did techniques. Um, so I not only think that I've broken the rule of using white space, but I've also broken my rule of layouts have to go together fast. So it's fun to break out of your box sometime. Give it a try. Figure out what your rules are and then go ahead and break them. That's your assignment. <laughs> and it's fun. You'll, you'll end up with a result that's going to be real different than a lot of your other pages, but hopefully something that you're, you're going to like. And I guarantee you'll remember making it. Okay, that's all for now. I'm Katie Scott. Okay, so I said it was over, but I have one more note on the um, issue of white space. So this is the book... White Space is Not Your Enemy, A Beginner's Guide to Communicating Visually Through Graphic Web Multimedia and Multimedia Design. It's by Kim Golombiski and Rebecca Hagen, who happen to live here in the Tampa Bay, or at least one of them does, in the Tampa Bay area. And so the definition of white space is here on page six. And let's read it. Um, where is it? Make pictures and words work together in space. Now you need some building blocks for capturing, controlling, conveying, and evoking. In the simplest sense, effective design and layout teams up pictures and words to communicate a unified message, regardless of the visual medium or vehicle. At the risk of oversimplifying, you really have only three building blocks, visuals, typography, and space. Okay. Imagine space as the sandbox that encourages visuals and typography to play well together. Beginners often make the mistake of forgetting to account for space. Too much space and visuals and type get lost or don't talk to each other. Not enough space and they start to fight with each other. The idea is to arrange visu visuals and type harmoniously in space. Don't think of space as immaterial or invisible nor is space a vacuum to be filled. Space is real, even when we call it white space or more properly, negative space, since, all, since not all white space is white. Negative space always has weight and structure in graphic design. There's an old saying, white space is nice. Amateurs tend to pack every nook and cranny of space with visuals and type. Don't. White space is not your enemy. And so, and then the very next paragraph, which I think is hilarious um, because I didn't plan this, um, is know the rules and then break the rules if you have a reason. So our, it says, I, our students like to find exceptions to the, rule of the rules of design we, we teach them. That tickles us because it means our students are tuning into design. Often the exceptions to the rules of design that students show us are good examples of bad design. 
but sometimes the exceptions are good examples of good design, then we have to explain how breaking the rules can produce good design that communicates. Usually our explanations fall into two categories, professional license and changing design trends. And so it, this is our, their example. It's like a, a roller derby poster. Rules what rules? This promotional ro roller derby poster breaks more than a few, a few typesetting rules, yet it works. It works because it evokes the right grungy, hard knock feel one would expect from a sport that features tough women on roller skates. Design based on original photo by Charlie Chu, Shutter Thug. So this is a great book. Um, it go, it's, it, it's not about scrapbooking, but so much of it can be applied to scrapbooking that I would definitely recommend this book. It says it's $39.95, but I think I got it for like 25 bucks on Amazon. But I would recommend the book and white space is not your enemy. But it's not, it's also not my best friend, personally. Okay, that's all. Um, white space.